Welcome to another episode of Mic Out. In this episode, I wanted to demonstrate my method of adjusting for magnetic variation or declination, as it's also called. Magnetic variation is the difference between true north and magnetic north. Magnetic north is a point somewhere in the northern hemisphere where your needle on your compass points to. Despite what it says, the north on the needle does not point to the true north. It's off by some degrees. And how off it is depends on where on the globe you are. The magnetic field across the world is different and on some parts of the world it's very important to adjust for that. Otherwise you will end up uh, somewhere else than you may think when you're trying to navigate. Other parts of the world, like where I am, magnetic declination or variation is of little importance and that's because the declination here is three degrees or three and a half degrees east. That means that the magnetic needle on my compass points three and a half degrees east of true north. Let's get started. Well, we need a map and a compass. So here we have our map of the area I'm in. And uh, if you look very carefully, you will notice something different on this map than some other maps. That's because this is an orienteering map. Or maybe you won't because the variation is so little here. It's uh, not very large. But if you look at the edge of this map, going here, and the meridians, or the north-south going lines, they are a bit skewed to the right, or to the east. They are actually skewed three and a half degrees to the east. That's because most orienteering maps here, or probably all of them, are already adjusted for magnetic variation. That means if uh, you want to take a bearing, this is not a navigation course, but let's say we are on the hill here. I want to go to this place, the green area here. We just align that there, and then we turn the compass, the house of the compass. So they line up with the meridians. So these lines in the house here, they line up. Well, sort of. And there you go. Uh, if we put the needle in the house and go in that direction, sorry, we are going to end up on our target and we won't be off. Of course, here it's a, the declination is three and a half degrees. So it won't matter that much. So let's imagine that the meridians on this map is not adjusted for magnetic declination. They are going to true north or to the grid north. I guess most maps uh, today have a grid system on them and the grid is most likely some kind of UTM or uh, MGRS uh, and that means that true north and grid north are I mean within two degrees it's the same. So you could almost use the same method. Let's say we are here in the peak here 40 and want to go to this uh, turn around or the house there. We align it as usual and then we turn the house so the meridians align themselves uh, to the lines in the house as per normal and let's assume that we have a 10 degree eastern declination. So now that we have uh, aligned the compass and put the needle in the house we are ready to go to our target in that direction. But wait, we have a 10 degree eastern declination. Let's assume that we want to adjust for this magnetic de declination or the variation. My method is very simple. You just hold it like this and then you turn the compass or preferably your entire body. And on this compass is the declination scale here inside. And it says eastern declination there and western declination there. So if we were supposedly going in that direction, we need to compensate by turning the compass, just the compass. Now remember the logic here. 
the magnetic needle here is always pointing to magnetic north but we have an eastern declination of 10 degrees that means that magnetic north where the needle is pointing is 10 degrees east of true north so that's the only logic you need now when we have done that when we turn the compass like that and it says 10 degrees or 10 degrees up here then we set it and of course if you look at the if you would subtract up here you would subtract 10 degrees and now our compass is set and we can move to the target so let's assume we have the opposite way taking a bearing of a feature in the terrain and finding that feature on the map perhaps you're doing some triangulation to figure out exactly where you are or something else so we have this feature here and it's uh, pointing to east but now the compass I mean the house and the needle and everything it's pointing to magnetic north so how was it now we need to do the opposite we need to set the compass the way it was before so instead of moving the compass 10 degrees and then setting it like that we are going to move the house so it looks like it was before this is a re the reverse of what we did before so what we're going to do is to turn it so that the magnetic needle is pointing 10 degree east and there we go now if we would plot this on the map it should point straight to our target even on the map and in real life and of course when you go back to your target from your map you have to do the the, the first method again that is take the compass and then just turn it slightly and then turn it here and voila we are east again okay so just a quick uh, uh, navigation uh, course here or just how to basically I use it when you set up the compass uh, to your direction travel when you've done the one two three system or whatever you call it on your map and you have your bearing and uh, the terrain is like it is here you don't really see anything further than 50 meters maybe that means that you have to look at something that looks uh, that stands out in the terrain like a particular tree or uh, a hill or something laying on the ground something that you can go to without getting lost or not finding it I usually want to have this the the point of the compass or the edge of the compass uh, where I am or where I think I am if I'm uh, pacing uh, I usually move the compass on the map every 100 meters and for me that's 55 or in, on average 55 steps in the train 55 leaps uh, or not sorry not 55 steps but actually 55 uh, left foot steps so I would count with my left foot and for each step I would count add you know just left foot one left foot two etc and when I get to 55 I know that I'm pretty close to 100 meters that means that I can move uh, the uh, yeah where I put the reference point on my map 100 meters ahead towards the target in the direction of travel that I've the the, the bearing that I've set so if I'm in a terrain like this where there are no real features I don't really see where you are it's a good idea to pace count and uh, yeah but let's navigate here so what I would do is to always have the compass on the map and aligned etc and what I would do is to uh, you know I, I like to use this mirror compass it's good you don't really need this kind of accuracy but in this case I pointed to something in the direction of travel and where the notch is or where I where I shoot this compass I see that there's a funny looking tree there that is very easy to find and maybe that's like 15 meters away not very far 
So uh, when I get to that funny looking tree I will uh, take a new bearing or shoot the compass again against something else further up ahead and that way I will uh, be able to get to my target uh, in yeah sort of accurate anyway. The good thing about uh, uh, this uh, dead reckoning method or whatever it's called is that you can uh, go around obstacles and still be on course because you have your reference in this case the funny looking tree and you can find it so in this case I'm on the opposite side of the tree and I'm going to take a new bear so in this case I think I'm going to go out on a limb here I see something that looks like some ring on a tree or something in the distance and that's maybe like 50 meters away so that's my next reference point let's go there it was actually a stone in the tree so yeah that's a reference you can go to and uh, if you see it all the time and you can find it then it's a good reference if you uh, lose it then chances are that you uh, are off and then you should just stop and do a new dead reckoning find a new reference and go to that So there we go. Uh, I intended to end up exactly on the fork of the road and that's what I did. That's uh, a little bit over one kilometer of uh, navigation and dead reckoning. Uh, of course this is a, a pretty simple area to navigate in, you won't get lost, you will always find a trail somewhere. But it's anyway cool that it works. So this has been another episode of Mike Out. I hope you like it and uh, subscribe. This is Mike, out.